Welcome back, everyone. Well, there may come a point in your life or in the life of someone you love where therapy could be beneficial, but what if your insurance won't cover it? Or what if your insurance only gives you a certain number of sessions? What if you don't have insurance? What if you want to do this completely private, not have any reports? There's an interesting and helpful group called Volunteers in Psychotherapy that works with patients to get them the therapy they need at low or no cost, all in exchange for volunteering in our community. Dr. Richard Schulman is the founder of the program, and he is joining us today. Welcome, doctor. Hi, thanks for having me on. This is great. So, you know, so many people might be thinking that, oh, uh, you know, someone recommended I go to therapy. Maybe they're going through a divorce. Maybe they're going through a loss of a loved one, but they realize I don't have $100 an hour, or my insurance won't cover it, or they want to keep it completely private, and they think, oh, I just can't go. Not so. This is what your organization is for. Right. I mean, I used to work at Hartford Hospital <clears throat> in the Institute of Living and left there about 20 years ago to set up this organization. So Volunteers in Psychotherapy has been functioning now for over 17 years. And Seeing so people in therapy, just as you described, people in exchange do volunteer work at a charity or government agency or nonprofit of their choice. So, for instance, if someone has, a, has an issue, maybe they're going through a divorce and they want to go through therapy, what would be the first step to getting into your organization and getting some help? Sure. They just call us. I mean, sometimes people go to our website, but they just call us. We describe how they can get started with us. And then, as I say, they pick the place they volunteer, and wherever they volunteer, it's private. In other words, if they're volunteering in a hospital or soup kitchen or a shelter, that agency, for their privacy, doesn't know. Doesn't that the know why they're doing it. Right. Okay. Um, and is it, is, can you get in with most of the time with a therapist? Are there enough available that are volunteering their yeah. time? We're always, we, we have licensed psychologists primarily and pretty experienced folks who provide the therapy but we've had psychiatrists and social workers also who've worked with us so we're also open to having new people work with us um, but there usually isn't any big delay I, I keep uh, my whole schedule open so that uh, people don't have to wait if uh, they're looking to meet with one of us and there might be uh, there's psychologists all over the greater Hartford area right it functions like a clinic without walls so if uh, somebody uh, does the volunteer work to start being seen they might see somebody in Glastonbury or somebody in Hartford or in West Hartford typically what would be the protocol uh, seeing someone once a week well, that's up to the person. I mean, we've sometimes worked with people who are really in a difficult uh, position, and if they do the volunteer work to earn even more than one session per week, as long as they're okay with whatever they arrange with the therapist, it could be more or less than that. Okay. And family therapy is up for grabs, too. Maybe you, you, you want to go with mom, dad, and the kids. Sure. You can exchange for volunteering in that way, too? Sure. And in, in some ways, that's a very powerful way to get at something that's uh, problematic in a family because people speak right in front of each other and give their own perspective on what's going on. What types of issues would you treat? Well, all sorts of things. Everything that you mentioned, but I also point out that a lot of times people come into therapy because they have really secret and troubling things that are on their mind. I and mean, if you think of things like sexual abuse or for people who grow up in families where there's a lot of either bullying or uh, substances that are being abused, sometimes people have things that they wouldn't talk about uh, or wouldn't talk about openly unless they knew they had real privacy. And that's why we set up this organization because many people don't realize that under managed care, a therapist who contracts with managed care might be required to send off intermittent reports about their discussions. And through our organization, there are no reports to anyone. It's as private as Connecticut state law allows. <clears throat> and also, no psychiatric label gets sent off to an insurer bec or becomes part of somebody's permanent medical records. Because this is one of the things that people are moving on to jobs. Some people are worried that, like, well, you know, I need this therapy, but I don't want this label mm -hmm. uh, that perhaps maybe could my employer find it, could someone find it, because right. it's in this electronic record. Right, and even occasionally we get people in professions who really want to maintain their privacy, but we see a great range of people. I mean, sometimes we've seen people who are in and out of state hospitals or went to public clinics, such as the one I used to work at, where they really don't have access to private conversations with a therapist, or they don't have the type of time that it takes some time, uh, sometimes to reveal really difficult things that have gone on in their lives. And I know you've gotten, uh, people are wondering what type of person will I be seeing. These are all uh, people with their uh, licenses, medical degrees. You've gotten a lot of awards for this organization, and it's been around a long time. Right, 17 years, you're right. We've gotten awards from the Connecticut Psychological Association or from the American Medical Institute of uh, Medical Education, I think it's called. Uh, most of the people, uh, the psychologists we've had, I think on average, have been working in the field for 30 years or more, mm -hmm. and they do a few hours of this work through us because they see it as the right way to, uh, to do therapy with real privacy, and plus, all of our clients 
clients are really doing a lot of volunteer work in the community to, so to speak, pay for their therapy. So people are committed. They're really it's doing an exchange. And, and how does that work? It's like if I go for an hour of therapy, I go do an hour of volunteer. How do you keep track to make sure people are holding up their end of the bargain? Well, we do keep track. That's a bit more detailed, but I always explain to clients how we do this. It's actually four hours of volunteer work that earn every therapy session, oh, but okay. we give extra credit for things like blood donations or donations of hair to locks of love, where sometimes people have done things way above and beyond the call of duty, like bone marrow. Uh, uh, what's that called? Contributions or donations? Right. So there's a lot of ways. You're not going to tell people how to volunteer. They get to choose lots of ways they that they can give choose. back. Right. But as they give back, they can then receive this free or low-cost therapy in exchange. Right. And it's pretty functional. We've been doing this with well over 600 people now in the last 17 plus years. All right, Dr. Richard Schulman, very interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, for more information, to get in contact with Dr. Schulman and his team, it's ctvip.org. Very interesting. Thank you, Scott. That is very interesting. All right, thanks, Kara.